Hey everyone, Jim Fitzpatrick. Thanks so much for joining us on today's show. In fact, on today's show, we've got Mr. Matt Easton, coach to the world's top performers and founder of Easton University. He's going to explain when salespeople and business owners learn to slow down in the beginning with customers and clients, it makes all the difference. Uh, so please pay attention to this segment. You're not going to want to miss it. Matt is, uh, is one of the top trainers and coaches out there and uh, we are so happy to have him on the show today so matt thank you so much for taking the time with us once again thanks for having me on the network jim and i am telling you what we're going to talk about today is a bit counterintuitive but the way we have been doing things in sales since the beginning of time it makes no sense at all if you really think about it so what i'm going to ask the audience to do yeah you hi out there <laughs> What I'm going to ask you to do is just trust me. Trust me on this one a little bit. We're, I'm going to I'm going to give you some advice. I'm going to give you some instructions that are kind of against the way you do things right now in sales. And if you do what Jim and I are going to talk about right now, I promise you this. I absolutely promise you, this will change your world. Here's what I want you to do in a nutshell. I want you to slow the process down in the beginning so you can speed up the results in the end. We in sales, we as business owners, we as sales professionals, we've got it screwed up. We're doing it the wrong way. We're speeding up in the beginning and then we spend a lot of, hey Jim, I'm just following up, just checking in, just seeing if you still wanted to place the order on that vehicle, just seeing if you still needed advertising, just see if you still need a venue for your wedding, whatever it is that we're selling. When we speed up the process in the beginning, this is why, y'all, this is why we're spending so much time on the phone calling people that aren't calling us back. Jim, I've got a question for you. I want you to think about the decisions you've made in your life, the small decisions, even purchases, the major decisions, who you're going to start a family with, where you're going to buy a home, what vehicle you're going to drive. And I want you to think you can probably, with all of those things, think about your reasons for why you wanted to do it. Like probably what you ate for breakfast, even if you had breakfast this morning, your reasons, hey, I'm gonna stop into Starbucks and I'll get a muffin or whatever because I don't have a lot of time, I gotta get to the studio, right? right? Okay. And your relationships, I love this person because they have this, this, and this, and they're perfectly aligned with my values and what I wanna do. Or this car is gonna be ideal for me because it's gonna be fun on the weekends, but I can still put my friends in the back seat. Jim, you've got reasons for all of the decisions you make, right. yes? That, yes, I yeah. do. And in most cases, Jim, I'm just gonna go out on a limb here. These are your personal reasons, yes? And not what That's Matt right. Easton told you. That's right. right? You, gotta, you gotta drive this or date this person or eat this. Those, those kind of decisions don't really play well, do they? When no. it's not you wanna do. That's right. So I think it's fair to say, we all make decisions, we're all likely to make a purchase decision, make a life decision, make a relationship decision based on our reasons, okay? Why am I telling you guys this? I'm telling you this because somebody is calling your dealership, your store, your company, your location, your business, yourself, and you're asking them what they want and then immediately pivoting into what you have and why they should buy it from you, why they should buy it from you right now, and all the things that make you great. And you're skipping over the biggest driver to them making that decision, and that's their reason. Yeah. So the first thing I want everybody to do, I wrote it down for you so it's simple. Ask them this little question. What's your biggest reason for blank? and listen to the answer. What's your biggest reason for needing a new vehicle? Mm -hmm. What's your biggest reason for needing catering? What's your biggest ne reason for needing advertising for your business? Well, we wanna grow the business. When you say you wanna grow the business, can you give me a specific example? When you say you want a vehicle that's gonna be fun on the weekends, yet still allow you to do what you need to do during the week, can you give me a specific example? Mm -hmm. Yeah, my kids, in, I mean, I'd love to drive a 911, but my kid's in hockey, right? So it seems like you kind of want that sporty feel, but you need some room for a hockey bag in the back, mm -hmm. okay? When you slow down in the beginning, I don't want you to talk about what you're selling. I don't want you to talk about your products, your services, your company, your solution. Dig in and figure out what is their biggest reason for blank, mm -hmm. okay? 
once you understand that, then it's very easy for you to say things like, hey, Jim, because of the fact that you told me you can only have one vehicle, you want to be able to go to hockey during the week and on the weekends for games, but at the same time, you want to feel good about yourself when you're driving around. You don't want to feel like you're in a minivan. Because of the fact that you said that, I'd like to recommend this. But notice now all of your recommendations, when you slow the heck down in the beginning, are based on what they want. Hey, Jim, because of the fact that you, let's say you were single and my wife had friends, because of the fact that you said you're looking for somebody that's this, 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 and you know is aligned with your core values, I'd like to recommend we go out and do a double date with my wife's friends, blankety blank, right? Mm -hmm. It's a lot easier when you understand that person's reason, right? not I need a car, I'm single or whatever it is, I need advertising. Why do they need advertising? It's very easy for you to make a recommendation. Sure. Then it's very easy, Jim, because we've slowed, this is now we're up to the speed up process. It's that simple, guys, slow down in the beginning and then you can speed up. Then you can say things like, does it make sense to blank so you can blank. Hey, Jim, does it make sense to put an order on this new SUV that also goes zero to 60 in three seconds so you can both take your kid to hockey and feel like your Emerson Fittipaldi or um, Mario Andretti on the weekends, right? Right. Does it make sense? I'm not putting any pressure on you to blank so you can keywords being so you can does it make sense to use our advertising campaign so you can get another 37 leads a week into the business allowing you to open a second location and this, so you can just as an affirmation to what they told you drove them to that purchase right because boom of, right bingo jim you're picking up what i'm putting down and this seems so easy for us talking here on the network this is so darn difficult for salespeople to understand. And this is one thing that we talk about at easternuniversity.com all the time on our lives. When we jump into our features, our benefits, why they should buy it from us, why they shouldn't buy it from the competitor, why our price is right, why our price is right right now, and we skip the what their biggest reason is, we've got nothing then on the backside in terms of follow-up other than hey, I'm just checking in to see if you want to do this. Right. The, right. the so you can is what they wanted to do. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Not what marketing says people want to do with this vehicle. Not what you think somebody would want your advertising campaign. The so you can is down to that granular level of personalized detail. Does it make sense to order this new X-Ray SUV so you can not only get your kids to hockey, but also feel like uh, an IndyCar racer on the weekends, right? It's what they said. That's right. Now, we've been able to speed up, and this is, please, guys, you don't have to be on easternuniversity.com to learn this stuff. You just need to trust me and you need to trust Jim. Slow down and take the time to learn what your prospect truly wants. And what they want is not the product that you sell, not the service that you sell, not your company or your business. What they want is the outcome. Figure out what the outcome is. I want one singular vehicle that can not only get my kids to hockey, do it safely, get groceries, but make me feel like I'm 16 years old again on the weekends. That's what they want. Okay. Here's the other neat thing about when you understand the thing in the beginning, when somebody shuts you down, Jim, and says, Hey, we've decided not to do it. We're going to go with your competitor. We're putting this off until next year. Now, instead of being like, well, if I could just have five minutes of your time, I'd like to get you back in here. I'd like to have you talk to our boss. All of that crap that goes on in the end when you don't understand the prospect, trying to force them into a sale when they reject you, you can simply use your net outcome statement. Mm -hmm. Hey, no problem, Jim. I'll be here when you need blank. Mm -hmm. Right? Oh, we're not going to buy the car this weekend. No problem. I'll be here when you need a vehicle that's going to allow you to get to hockey, get the groceries, and at the same time, feel like you've got a personal life once again and you bought a car for yourself. Fair enough? Yep. Right? And when you leave a client like that, when you leave a prospect with this, it leaves the door wide open for you to call them back the next day, that's the right. next week. That's you're right. not being forceful. You're not doing this buy or die nonsense. Like, if, hey, if they if the, we if we stop talking to them, consider them dead. That does not work in this age. Even though there's some other coaches out there 
saying, hey, you better pressure this person because you're never going to talk to him again. When you leave them with a statement like, hey, no problem, Jim, we'll be here when you need advertising for your business that's going to bring you in those additional 38 leads you were yep. talking about so you can open a second location. Fair enough, right? It's very easy for me then the next day to go, hey, Jim, was thinking about you in the second location that you want to uh, open here in the next month. You know, I've got a couple ideas on some non-standard advertising campaigns that I'd love to get your opinion on. Could you call me on my mobile 720-660-3202. Hey, Jim, was thinking about you over the weekend and probably the fact that you were at a hockey game but wanted to have some personal life for yourself and wanted to not feel like you're driving around in grandma's minivan. You know what? There's a new vehicle that lot, not a lot of people know about that I'd love to get your opinion on. Could you give me a call at the dealership? 720-660-3202 is a much better message. But we can't, we, guys, please, I'm begging you. You can't do any of this if you jump right into answering the phone. What do you want? Hold on. Let me check. Oh, I'm looking at my inventory. I have two of those right now, right? <laughs> Figure out their why. What is their biggest, what's your biggest reason for moving? I hate my neighborhood right now. When you say you hate your neighborhood, what's going on? Then it's very easy for me to, hey, Jim, does it make sense for me to show you some houses so you can get away from that? crazy neighbor. You said his name was Barry and he's shooting guns off at three o'clock in the morning. <laughs> you under, when you understand that level of granular detail about your customer, it speeds up the whole sales process. That's right. But we have to slow down in the beginning and learn. Ask the questions. You don't need to be, we've got a million things on Easton University. I'm giving you this for free. Very simple. Very, very simple. Just ask them what their biggest reason is for blank. What's your biggest reason for needing a new vehicle? What's your biggest reason for moving? What's your biggest reason for advertising? Whatever it is that you sell, ask them their biggest reason. I love it. They'll tell it's, you. It's that easy. They're going to tell you how to sell them that product from that point yes. on, right? I love yes. it. I love it. And Jim, we get too, we, we push too hard in terms of, let me tell you about my features, my benefits, my special, yep. why you should buy from me, why you should buy from my company. They don't care how much you know about your features, your benefits, your specials in your company until they know how much you care about them. That's right. And the best way to show them that you care about them is to ask them what their biggest reason is for doing this in the first place. That's right. And by the way, would you agree that it's important if it is a husband or wife situation that you bring both of them and you ask both of them that question individually so that you get her input just as, as important as you get his input on, on what their motivation is in purchasing that item at that time? Because you might find there's a little bit of difference there and you want to get them on the same page, right? 100%. And in, 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 this is not exclusive to just husband and wife. Sometimes we're dealing with a business and there's multiple that's, that's partners right. or multiple owners. That's right. When there's multiple decision makers, don't be afraid to figure out everybody else's reason why. Yeah. Worst case, you're not going to give be able to give everybody exactly what they want, but at least you've addressed it. That's right. Because what's going to end up happening is that husband in the background is going to be like, I don't want that car. It's too slow right? Or whatever that reason is. I don't want that ad campaign. They're not giving us text messaging. Yep. Exactly right, Jim. Figure out what everybody's reasons yeah, are. I agree. Matt Easton, founder of Easton University. If you like what you see, there's a heck of a lot more here at Easton University. So check them out online. We'll show all the information right here. Thank you so much for your insights today. Really appreciate it. It was a pleasure having you on today, uh, Matt. And, uh, and then uh, obviously, you know, check us out now on Roku, Apple TV, and Fire TV. So Matt, thanks so much. Really appreciate it. Thank you so much for having me. Slow down, guys. Slow down in the beginning. You'll speed up the results in the end. I promise you. I love it. Thanks.